Hello, my name is Daniel and I'm also known as the Board Scrambler. I own a YouTube channel where I publish videos of myself scrambling up in the, into the mountains and you know having lots of fun on rock and etc etc. In today's short video I just wanted to give you five beginner tips for those that want to go out and do a bit of scrambling and I'm not quite sure where to start. Now this isn't going to be super in-depth, it's just five little things that I wish I'd known when I'd started. I would like to point out that I'm not a trained mountain guide or leader, just a bloke with lots of experience up in the mountains, so just take it as that. Okay, tip number one is to go and buy a book, a guidebook. Don't just do a random scramble up a gully and hope for the best because you have no idea what you're going to find. You step over a ledge that you might not be able to climb back down and who knows what's on the other side. So there are several different books. I will put them on the screen now. I use Scrambles in Snowdonia by Steve Ashton and there's over 80 routes um, and that is, I think would be a really, really good purchase. So tip number one, buy a guidebook. Don't just go up some random gully or a ridge and hope for the best. Okay, tip number two is to start off on the really easy scrambles. Believe it or not, the easy scrambles are often the longest ones. The more technical and challenging scrambles are normally over really, really quickly. You know, you might have like a short burst of grade three scrambling, but there are pl plenty of grade one scrambles that you could spend like well over an hour on the rock. So, you know, start off with the easier, low grade one scrambles and then work your way up and go out for your first few times at least go out when the weather is really really dry when the rock is dry and the weather's on your side you probably don't want to be going out when it's wet if it's been raining recently or if there's rain forecast for that day probably best off go and do something else okay tip number three is to pay really close attention to your footwear. So I own La Sportiva TX4 boots, which I feel are brilliant on rock, including on wet rock. However, they are absolutely treacherous on wet grass. The nice shallow lugs on the sole really stick to the rock, but they don't do anything in the wet grass because they're so shallow, they don't dig in. So I have two pairs of boots. I have a regular pair of hiking boots, a big deep tread, which I use on grass and mud and going up those wet hills and then I have my La Sportiva TX4s which are essentially my rock climbing boots and I only wear them on rock so tip number three is to invest in a decent pair of footwear that suits your needs because some of you will be spending a lot of time on rocks some of you might be spending more time going up wet grassy hills you know if you're a hiker for example you probably wouldn't want a boot with a really shallow lug if you're going up a wet grassy hill so tip number three is to do your research into the footwear and buy the appropriate shoes or boots for the terrain that you're taking them on it can make a big difference especially if you're moving on to more technical scrambling routes okay tip number four is learn to check the hold by that i mean if you're going up on rock even if it's something like the north ridge of Travan or the ever popular Krugok, you really want to be checking those holes and just get into the habit of giving them a little tap so if you're about to put any weight on a handhold for example or a foothold you want to tap it first tap it with your foot tap it with your hand if it feels hollow if it's loose it's moving about don't go anywhere near it if it's a really precarious position that you're in you probably want to do a little bit more than just tapping it forward maybe give it a little wiggle tap it to the side you know ask yourself is this going to hold my weight it's very easy when you're on a scramble to get into the flow of things and just be going up one hold after another after another and well the next one could be the one that comes loose and you go falling off 20 30 meters down the mountain so tip number four is to just get into the habit checking those holds giving them a little tap and a little nudge with your hand or your foot can make the difference between you being on the rock and you tumbling off of it tip number five is learn to see the telltale signs that thousands of other people have been on the route that you're on i have seen people go up say the north ridge of trevan and they get stuck and they end up going on rock which it's obvious nobody's ever walked on it because it's not polished it's not shiny there's no evidence at all that anybody's ever been on that rock yet they go on it 
might get stuck. <laughs> um, so you just get into the habit of looking at the rock and seeing the telltale signs that somebody has been on this route before. Polished, shiny rocks, bent grass or grass not growing because it's been walked on so many times over and over. Obviously some of the routes branch off into climbing routes and so forth but generally if you've got lots of polished rock lots of bent grass little telltale signs that loads of people on this route have been on the route before and you're not on virgin rock the last thing you want to do is to go on a route that nobody would dream of going on because it's so treacherous and it's so wet and so horrible or anything like that so tip number five is just get those mountain eyes you can start looking more acutely at the rock and noticing the telltale signs that you are on the route that you should be on you haven't wandered off and just gone on to rock that nobody's ever been on before okay i have a bonus tip we'll call this tip number six probably the best tip out of all of them know when to quit holy moly what have i got myself into here i'm lost i'm walking down from the snowdon mountain in wales right now and I've just spent two hours walking up. I haven't done a scramble today. I quit, I just bailed out, literally an hour ago. Why? Because I went up there and a route that I'd done last year that I found really easy last year was quite wet and greasy today after recent rainfall. And I made a judgment call. That it's not safe for me, it's on my own. I've got no rope with me. It's not safe for me to, going up, to be going up there. So I'm bailing out pretty much a waste of an afternoon really i mean i've had a nice hike up and down the mountain but i haven't done any scrambling i was hoping to produce a video today for my channel and i'm a little bit disappointed that i haven't but i'm glad that i haven't fallen off of the mountain so the bonus tip there's no one to quit sometimes the conditions are just not in your favor you're not feeling it wrong route for you too difficult not what you expected whatever whatever so look that's it that's my little tips i know that this isn't a complete list i'm not going to tell you to bring lots of water with you or bring your sun lotion with you or don't go out too late in the day because you know the sun might go down i'm going to assume that you know that look i hope that you've enjoyed these little tips for newbie scramblers if you have do hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you will find lots of scrambling and hiking and wild camping content mostly in wales but also in other parts of the united kingdom again my name is daniel also known as the board scrambler thanks for watching